In this episode, we're going to accomplish two things. Number one, give you some audio samples from the brand new Rode NTG5 shotgun microphone, which you're hearing right now. And also a mini review of the Andy Cine monitor mount. This entire episode is recorded with the Rode NTG5. It is boomed out of the frame just right here. And we are recording into a Zoom F6 audio recorder in 32-bit float recording mode. And we have done no processing on the audio except to loudness normalize it to minus 23 LUFS. Of course, we'll have a full review on the Rode NTG5 coming later. It just arrived today. I just wanted to give you some audio samples so you can hear what it sounds like. Let's talk about this Andy Cine shoe mount friction arm for monitors. Now, I had a problem. I have a Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and a Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. Those cameras both have fixed monitors on the back of the camera. There's no way to flip it around so you can see it. That's not a problem when I'm doing my corporate shoots. It is a problem when I am doing this type of shoot, when I'm filming by myself, which is a dangerous thing to do. But it's a lot less dangerous if you have a monitor facing you. So I've got some monitors I can use. Andy Cine actually contacted me and said, hey, do you want to review one of our new monitors? I said, I don't actually have time for that. But if you have that little mount that you use to put in a shoe on top of your camera and mount the monitor on top of it, it's very low profile. I'd be interested in reviewing that. So they sent that over to me for free. They have not paid me further to do this review. And everything I say here is my own opinion. So why couldn't I just use a friction arm? In fact, I have a friction arm. I've had several friction arms, used them over the years. They work pretty well for certain circumstances, but when you're putting it on your camera, you're trying to keep a really kind of a low profile rig. I find that it's better to have something smaller, something that keeps the monitor closer to the body of the camera. And this solved that problem. Now, there are a ton of very, very inexpensive ball shoe mounts that come with different monitors. They're kind of thrown in with the, the low end monitors. And those are a pain because they, first of all, when you try to tighten them up, they have these tiny little handles that you can use to tighten them. They don't grip very well. They kind of dig into your hand when you're trying to tighten them up. And a lot of them have just fallen apart on me over the years. So we tried the Andy Cine instead. This one's different for the following reasons. Number one, it's small. It keeps the monitor very close to the overall cage of the camera. Number two, it's simple. There are no little knobs to tighten up. Instead, you have Allen keys. Now, some people would say, well, that's kind of a pain because now you got to keep track of an Allen key. I think every cinematographer has a set of Allen keys in their bag. It's not a huge problem. And if you don't, this comes with one and it comes with a multi-tool as well. It's all metal and you're able to tighten it up so it gives plenty of friction. It provides enough friction so that you can mount a seven inch monitor and even put the very big NPF style batteries on it, the 970s, and it is able to hold that up very nicely. So solve that problem. It runs $35.99 USD at present in the United States. We have a link down below. And I believe right now there's a $5 coupon if you buy it on Amazon. So if you see this soon enough, it might still be there. So overall, this solved my problem. That's, I think, all we really need to say about it. It also comes, incidentally, with this plastic case, an Allen key, and a multi-tool, so can be kind of helpful on set as well. So everything you need to get up and going, simple, reasonably priced, that is an example of what I was looking for to solve this problem, and it looked like it solved it nicely. So hope that was helpful for you. Also hope that the audio sample from the Rode NTG5 was helpful for you. We're obviously gonna go into a lot more detail about this microphone over the coming weeks, and also about the, we have a follow-up review coming up on the Zoom F6. We did our initial impressions back in May, and now that we've worked with the F6 a little bit more, I'm gonna come back at you with my final impressions. So go ahead and leave any questions you have down below. And if you have not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And I'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.